advanced materials, methods, and technologies are providing many options for cost-efficient and environmentally sustainable application of roadway chemicals and abrasives. The combination of a greater selection of de-icing chemicals, improved application equipment, better trained personnel, improved weather forecasting, roadway weather information systems data, onboard sensors, cameras, and GPS data has drastically improved the sophistication and effectiveness of anti-icing and de-icing operations. Let's first define the difference between anti-icing and de-icing. Anti-icing is taking measures prior to a precipitation event to prevent the formation of a bond between precipitation and the pavement. In other words, anti-icing is a proactive weather fighting measure. De-icing is a reactive measure to break a bond between ice and pavement by chemical or mechanical means or by a combination of both. With each approaching winter storm or event, consider your anti-icing strategy. Research has shown that de-icing is 10 times more expensive than anti-icing. However, anti-icing may not be the best answer for all situations. Your supervisor will inform you if anti-icing is needed. Before we get into the methods, let's talk about the de-icing chemicals and abrasives you may be using, how they work, how to store them, and how to apply them. All of the de-icing chemicals we use on Iowa's roads are freeze point depressants. A freeze point depressant reacts chemically with the water in snow or ice to melt it, even when the temperature is below zero. We'll start with sodium chloride, a mineral we commonly refer to as salt, rock salt, or road salt. Salt is the most frequently used chemical on Iowa highways. Sodium chloride is by far the most economical de-icing chemical available. It is very effective in melting ice and snow and requires little to no cleanup. However, salt is corrosive to vehicles, needs moisture to work, and is ineffective at very low temperatures. A secondary, less frequently used de-icing chemical is calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is around four times more expensive than sodium chloride, but is much more effective in melting ice at lower temperatures. Calcium chloride is found in natural brines that are pumped from underground. It is packaged as pellets or flakes in the dry form or in solutions of various concentrations. Calcium chloride generates heat when it dissolves into a brine, a very beneficial characteristic when melting snow and ice. Calcium chloride draws moisture from the air, which is beneficial in cold, dry conditions. However, these same properties can also lead to moisture accumulation in humid conditions, which may cause refreezing. Refreezing can make conditions worse or damage pavement. It is important to be aware of the weather forecast and to work with your shop supervisor to ensure calcium chloride is used properly. Calcium chloride is highly corrosive and must be handled appropriately. When working with calcium chloride, be sure to wear protective clothing and rubber boots. Although sodium chloride and calcium chloride are the most commonly used de-icing chemicals, there are a number of alternatives that can be effective in certain situations. A lot of research has been conducted on reducing the amount of chloride used in de-icing roadways and providing new environmentally friendly alternatives. These alternatives have difficulty competing with the low costs of chlorides, but the combination of a chloride alternative with a chloride can still have positive environmental impacts. Less corrosive than chlorides, these alternatives can also be used where structural integrity or environmental quality is a concern. Sand is also used as a roadway treatment, either alone or in a mix with salt. Sand provides short-term, immediate traction but has no melting effect on snow or ice. Anti-icing and de-icing materials are stored at Iowa DOT garages throughout the state. When storing salt, use a loader to move the salt into a shed or dome, filling from the back and working your way out. An auger or conveyor can be used to completely fill a dome by building a cone of salt in the center of a structure. For details about safe material handling practices, composition, and quality, ask your supervisor. Your shop or supervisor will have material safety data sheets for salt and other facility chemicals. Salt should be mixed with abrasives to help prevent the stockpile from freezing and to keep it workable during the winter. 
One way to mix salt and sand is to use a loader to move a quantity of sand out into an open area. 1 to 10 salt to sand mix is a good ratio when using salt as a sand pile conditioner. For road use, the percentage of salt or calcium chloride you should use in sand mixtures will vary depending on what you are trying to accomplish. Mix the appropriate amount of salt and sand together with a loader. Mixing should always be done on a paved surface. In addition to their use as solid deicers, sodium chloride and calcium chloride are also used in brine applications. Most brine used on Iowa highways is made from a mixture of sodium chloride and water. A brine maker is a large container in which salt and water can be mixed. Water is sprayed at high pressures into rock salt, creating a salt water solution. Critical to the brine making process is a hydrometer used to measure the specific concentration of salt in the mixture. Most garages use a specialized salt brine hydrometer called a salimeter, which shows salt concentration on a scale from 0 to 100%. The ideal concentration of salt in a fully saturated solution is 23.3% by weight, which equates to a salimeter reading of 85%. The salt solution concentration is critical in the production of brine. If the concentration is too low or too high, the brine will not do its intended job. Two types of bars can be used to apply brine. Spray bars, as shown here, and wet bars, as shown here. Another material application technique is pre-wetting. By spraying the solid de-icing material as it's fed into the spreader, the material is less likely to scatter and disperse off of the roadway. To ensure the proper amount of material is placed on the roadway, make certain the spreader is calibrated correctly. You will be able to find application rate charts at your garage or from your supervisor. Now, with your working knowledge of how anti-icing and de-icing chemicals work and how they are most effectively used in winter maintenance operations, you are ready to start assisting in making Iowa's road network safe for the traveling public. As always, work with your shop supervisor or mechanic to help answer any specific questions. 